Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to your Daily Penguin. This is our slow waddle through my Penguin Classic wall as we go book by book, author by author, down through the ages. We are in the first bookcase, which uh, in a fit of organizational passion a while ago, I sort of semi, kind of, sort of organized so that it wasn't just random according to when I got these books or when I pulled them off the shelf and stuck them back on there, which is why we have mostly been in the ancient world of Greece and Rome and have moved on to roughly the long Middle Ages from the, the, uh, the life of the Emperor Justinian to the doorstep of the Italian Renaissance. Roughly that, that thousand years is where we have, where we have found ourselves. Uh, I don't think that this organization will stay true throughout the rest of our, our year of penguins, but it's still true now. Uh, and right now, today, we are in the 14th century. So we're getting close to leaving this first bookcase, in w after which all rules are off. <laughs> uh, and we are, we're in the 14th century, we're in the Hundred Years' War, we're in the reign of Edward III and uh, Edward II and Richard II, and uh, we are in the hands today of one of the greatest chroniclers of any historical period, a, a figure who uh, doesn't have the popular appeal that I wish that he did. I don't think people realize when they see his book, even in English, what they're missing if they don't read it. This is this is Jean Froissart. Uh, Jean, Jean, Jean Croissant. <laughs> These are his chronicles, which uh, he came to England in 1361, uh, attached to the, the uh, court of Queen Philippa, who became the wife of Edward III and who was a remarkable, wonderful woman. Uh, and he loved her, so did everyone. Edward loved her, <laughs> and that wasn't uh, always an easy thing or a given with English kings. And he stayed for, for decades. He had uh, the run of court. He, had, he was a, a wonderful conversationalist, a wise and penetrating, insightful intellect, just the type of thing that Philippa loved to have around her, and just the type of thing that Edward always respected, even when he wasn't that way himself. Uh, and uh, while he was in England, and while he was going on various uh, court functions to the continent over and over again, he did that quite often, as did his exact contemporary and fellow denizen at court, uh, Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, while he was doing that, he was listening to stories and hearing first-hand accounts and seeing written accounts of all of the momentous events of his day and uh, decided, and history is grateful that he did, uh, to write it all and worked on that for the 1380s, the 1390s, constantly revising and putting out segments of a great work here and there in his chronicles, which in this Penguin classic, they are translated by Geoffrey Brereton who does a very good job. Uh, I, you could do a slightly better job at making this read in English for our modern audience the way it read when it was the talk of two kingdoms. Uh, but I, I don't fault Bariton at all. He's sticking the way you would do that, as we've talked about the vagaries of translation before in this, in this whole series, the way you would do that is by taking liberties with the original in the way that we've seen translators do. Uh, that's what you would have to do with croissant in order to get the original to come forward completely. You could do it, but it takes only a minor effort of imagination to get that to happen, even in this translation. Or, and and uh, it's an amazing reading experience. Froissart has uh, an ear for dialogue. He has a, a dramatist ear for scene setting and for the pacing of first broad scale events and then narrow events and then back to broad scale. He has a very keen ear for irony, for the kind of historical irony that is so tempting for writers, especially before the modern era of historical, under, of the understanding of, of history writing, uh, to invent. And he doesn't invent. He does almost no, almost no inventing. He's a uh, very Tacitian. He's a very, he's a very much like Tacitus. He has a great ear for stories, but, um, um, a controlled sweet tooth for uh, purple prose or outlandish, obviously contrived historical circumstances. In other words, you, as you're reading him, you come to trust him. You're not 100% sure that everything he's saying actually happened, but you trust that he would not be falsifying in the broader sense of the term. And he's a terrific storyteller, uh, which is 
not always true of Tacitus. I know that's heresy. It's true in his major histories, but not in everything that he wrote. And uh, sets him apart, in my opinion, from a lot of the other figures that we have seen in roughly the same time period. I think that he, the, the author that he bears the closest resemblance to is Chaucer. <laughs> and for those of you, not, not all of you know me, uh, but, and not all of you have known me forever. <laughs> so a few, few poor battered souls have known me forever. But when it comes to me, there is no higher praise than that. That digging sound that you hear is once again my little dog going nuts because I have dispelled her from my lap long enough to make this video. <laughs> You people, you and her, you are going to have to learn to share me. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I recommend this volume. I wish uh, that... <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for the sound effects. I wish that more people knew it. I, miss... I wish that more people looked at it as more than just a quarry ground for source material about the 14th century. I wish that, uh, that for instance, a big, new, lively, well-illustrated translation of this work sold even a tenth as many copies as Barbara Tuckman's A Distant Mirror, which which draws heavily on it. it I, I, that would be great. <laughs> that would be, not, to, not to slight A Distant Mirror, but it would be great if that happened, if this book were better known. Uh, but for your Penguin Classic today, it is certainly a strong recommendation. Brereton does a fine job. This is a fine English re rendering of Croissant. <laughs> Uh, and it'll get us through our penguin for today. This is by no means, every once in a while in this in these penguin classics, I and then then you are coming across a penguin classic that sits there and serves a purpose and and is worthy in its own right, but that is not an enthusiastic recommendation on my part. Please keep in mind, this isn't a syllabus. This is a personal tour through my shelves, and this one is an overwhelming recommendation. This is a, a tremendously good book to read, and not in the old-fashioned sense. Frossart uh, really understands the use of dialogue. He really brings forth the characters, the individual characters of the people involved. It's a, a masterful performance. So, so your Penguin Classic today is a recommendation. If you have this sitting on your shelf and you've never tried it before, maybe you got it for school, pull it down and give it a try. Uh, I, I uh, am a big fan of Edward III. <laughs> I'm a big, I'm an even bigger fan of his queen. I wish she had an English language biography of her own. Uh, I know, I know the period really well. I've read all sorts of popular historians on the subject, and also uh, every great whomping biography. <laughs> I wrote, a, I wrote a, a long review of one of those great whomping biographies in the Yale English Monarch series. If I remember, I will leave a link to it down below, uh, so that you can get the lay of the land. If if you don't want to read Wikipedia, I am a better reading experience than Wikipedia, uh, and and then move straight on to this. Boy, oh boy, talk about an easy pill to swallow and getting a classic onto your belt. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to wrap this up for now. We are still toiling away in the, the long Middle Ages, so I imagine that will stay true for a while. I don't know what we'll do tomorrow. I'm intentionally not looking ahead because that will, that will inflame the old pedagogue in me, and I will start to make a lesson plan, and I don't want to do that. This is, this is not... A syllabus. This is just me talking about these books that I that have meant so much to me and that I have loved. Uh, so uh, we're going to move on at random tomorrow. <laughs> Although it's not completely random because we're not going anywhere but the but the 14th century. So I will wrap this up for now, and I will see you then. Thank you, Booktube.